Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm reviewing another saw from Evolution Tools. And today I'm reviewing their multi-material cutting 10-inch TCT sliding miter saw. I have reviewed some of their products in the past. I'm very satisfied with them. That's why when they contacted me to review this saw, I said yes. And if you haven't seen my other reviews on Evolution Tools, the links are all below the video today. So to be transparent today, Evolution Tools contacted me. They did send me the saw at no charge. However, I am reviewing the saw as part of receiving it, just so that you guys can see the quality and how it cuts through different materials. And apparently this saw will cut through all these different materials here. I've got wood, I've got engineered wood here or plastic that you can use for decks. There's even some pipe here, PVC pipe. There's some metal. Some very thin metal here as well and we've got some nice thick square tubing as well so apparently this saw will not have an issue cutting through all of these and I think the reason for that is because of the blade that is actually on the miter saw so the first thing I'm going to do is an unboxing I'm going to put it together so you'll see how that's done as well now this is exactly what you'll see when you unbox one you're going to have all the paperwork. Here's the manual. You're going to get the instructions on how to put it together. And here's the blade. And again, this is a 10 inch blade. And here's a view of the blade with the plastic off. You can see it's got a different teeth pattern. Now I'll just take out the parts from the box. And here's the saw in the box. So I think that'll come out in one piece here. So actually it comes out in two pieces. And it's not that heavy. And at this point I will look at the instructions here just to make sure I get everything right. So now at this point you want to grab this part and insert it from the rear like this. You want the handle here facing up. Now you can grab this knob here. It does have a little spring here so make sure it doesn't pop out. And for now you can just loosely screw it into here. And that's to lock the sliding part of the saw here. If you go all the way down this is locked. Now at this point I will lock this knob here to lock this part. And I'm going to install the motor part. You want to slide it into the two tubes here. And when you push all the way in you should hear these click into their locking places. And now it's locked in. Here's where I'm at right now. If you did want to remove this, you would have to push inside here on each side. It'll get the little pins unlocked. And if you do want the miter saw to come up, just pull on this pin. You can loosen this again to slide it back and forth. Now you'll see at the back of your saw here, there is an Allen wrench. Now this Allen wrench has two sizes on it. One end's bigger, the other one's smaller. And it's for these Allen screws at each end of the saw. So just take them out for now. And then you'll have two pieces like this in the box. You want to install one at each end of the saw. And now just repeat the same process on the other side. And you've got your other piece of plastic to go there. Now in the box you'll find this plastic piece with this screw. It's an Allen screw. And that piece goes in the back here, just like this. And again, use your Allen key or wrench that came with it. Now this part here from the box goes over here. You want to insert this shaft here and stop where the grooves are so that this little screw here can actually lock it. 
I think that's just to hold your wood down when you're cutting, so I'm just going to leave it out of the way for now. So now just tighten up the knob, it'll keep it from moving. And now you've got this knob with a bolt on, so what you want to do is thread that into here. And that's just to lock the position of the saw. So basically it's to lock the angle that you set it at. And when you want to move it around to set the angle, you just push down on this and you can slide it from side to side. But once the knob is tightened up, you cannot move it. And I'm going to install the bag at the back here. And basically you just squeeze the clamp here to be able to expand it to get onto the adapter. And now it's nice and tight. Now there is an adapter that did come with it. Not exactly sure what it's for. It might be to adapt this to like a vacuum for the sawdust. I'm not sure. So now at this point, make sure the bottom screw is loose. You can move the guard out of the way. Now the Allen wrench that came with the kit does fit in here. And it's reverse threaded. So just keep that in mind. And now just pull that out. So now grab the blade to make sure the saw is not plugged in. Bring this all the way up. Insert the blade. Make sure it's properly lined up on the bushing here. Now insert the other spacer. And again, remember it's reverse threaded. And again, use the wrench provided with the saw. To lock up the saw, just push this button here. And make sure you put this fairly tight. And now just put this guard back down. All you have to do is tighten up this screw here. And that's all there is to putting the saw together. And if you're using an extension cord like I am, make sure it's of the same gauge. Now on this saw, there is a knob at the back that if you loosen it, you'll be able to change the angle from side to side like this. For now, I'm going to leave it at zero. And the gauge is at the back here underneath the saw. So now it's plugged in. I'm just going to turn it on just to make sure it works. And you may have noticed that it is kind of a delayed start. If I push on the switch. The delayed start like that takes a bit of getting used to, but I've noticed a lot of new saws now are made like that. Not just the evolution ones. Okay, so now the saw is all put together, it wasn't too bad. In the next part of the video, I'll be showing you how it performs cutting all the materials provided in the small box. Alright, so I've got all the materials here that Evolution sent me in the box to cut with the saw. I'm going to start off with the 2x4 with some nails in it. Then I'll move on to these metal pieces over here. There's a copper pipe. This is the engineered wood for decks. So it's kind of like a composite material. We have some PVC pipe, a metal pipe over here, square tubing, some thin metal, some more engineered wood, or some kind of material for decks. And make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you use this saw. So I'm going to go ahead with the first piece here, the two by four with the nails. And here we are, it cut through there no problems. Now I'm going to go with this engineered material for decks, it's quite dense. And I'll do another cut from this side. And again, it went through this like nothing. Now I'm going to cut through this transition piece. It's made of metal. So 
again, it cut through this piece easily as well. The only thing you want to make sure with a thin piece like that is that it doesn't get underneath here. If it gets under here, it's hard to do a straight cut. And I've got the thin piece of aluminum. It's an angled piece like this. And again, it cut through that aluminum piece very easily. Next, I'll be cutting this engineered material as well. This is often used for decks. And again, very easily through this engineered material, no problems whatsoever. Now I've got this half inch piece of copper pipe. And you can see it's a clean cut as well. Not too many burrs, hardly any. So if you're doing a lot of plumbing, you could use this saw to cut all your pipe. Now I've got this piece that's a quarter inch thick. It's just a piece of metal. And we'll see how it cuts through that. And no problems whatsoever and it is a clean cut as well as you can see here. Make absolutely sure you wear your safety equipment on your face cutting metal with this saw because you can feel the metal shards flying all over the place. Next is the PVC pipe. And again, we've got some nice clean cuts here, no issues whatsoever. Now we're starting to get into the bigger pieces of metal. First, I'm going to cut this thin piece here. Now, as expected, I didn't have any issues cutting through here. What I am impressed with is how clean of a cut it does, even on really thin metal like this. I thought the blade might get jammed in there and just kind of cause a lot of burrs, but it's totally nice and clean. And let's try the square tubing first. I ended up cutting two pieces off of this one and again I'm quite impressed just a few slight burrs here but no big deal overall the cut is quite clean and that's amazing and just a quick tip here guys it's a good idea to wear a face mask when you cut metal with that saw like I just did and also wear your earmuffs I wore them because you can feel the metal spraying all over the place and it might get in your face but make sure you wear safety glasses even under the face shield as well. And I saved the biggest piece for last. It is the thickest piece of metal that I have here that was sent. I expect no problems because everything else went quite smoothly. And again, no problems whatsoever. 
I did two cuts on this pipe. And here are the pieces. There are a few burrs. They can be easily cleaned up though. And overall it's a nice clean straight cut. So as you saw here, it cut everything quite easily, but after I test the saw like this, that's cut through a lot of different materials like that, is the condition of the blade, especially the teeth on the blade. So I've unplugged the saw here, and I'm going to spin it slowly to make sure all the carbides are still on the blade. And so far, so good. And after cutting all that material, not one piece of carbide is missing from this blade. So that's quite impressive. And I believe you can buy different blades to add on to the saw as well. This is the multi-material blade. So the blade that's on the steel, aluminum, wood and plastic. And overall I'm quite impressed with the saw. It's well built. It's pretty solid. It does not feel cheap. And the material on the base is quite solid and robust as well. And the saw does come with a three year limited warranty. And there's the spec on it, R255. And what I do like is you can cut a full 4x4 post over here. And it is a 15 amp saw. The cord is 10 feet. You can cut steel up to a quarter inch. And one eighth thick mild steel square tube. And here's the max crosscut you can do. There is also a small setting here on the saw so that you can adjust how deep or down you want the blade to go. And again the base is well built. Much better than other saws I've seen in the big box stores. And I do like the handle and the switch on top like this. And just a quick tip here guys, make sure the blade is spinning at full speed before you even go into the material. If you don't have it at full speed and may jam up in the material, you could damage the blade. And I've seen these at Canadian Tire in Canada. I'm not sure about the states, but I'm sure you could find it. So thanks again for watching my review guys. I am impressed with the saw. I do recommend it and I'm not only recommending it because it was sent to me to make a review to show you guys but I'm recommending it because it is a good saw and it is good quality. Also, if you haven't seen my other reviews on Evolution Tools, all the links are under the video so that you can go watch them. Make sure to check out their website, evolutionpowertools.com. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and have yourselves a great day.